Hey, it's Andy from SmartWP, and today I'm gonna to show you how to migrate your WordPress.com site to your own self-installed WordPress.org version of WordPress on your own server. Now, there are many reasons that you'd wanna do this, including infinite customization, but if you're watching this video, you probably already know why you wanna do it and you just wanna know how to do it, so let's just hop right in. So you can see we're on our example WordPress.com site here. We have a homepage here and a few pages set up and about 40 blog posts on the site. And we also have some images in the posts as well that are gonna be migrated over. So let's go into our WordPress.com admin. So you can see here we have about 40 posts and a few pages here. Uh, in addition, we have about uh, 20 or 30 things of media files. If you have thousands of images and thousands of posts on your WordPress.com site, it might be a little bit different to migrate it than what we're gonna do here. But if you have under 100 or you know under 200, this will work for you. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is actually make an export of our WordPress.com site. And this can be done by going to Tools, Export, and this button up here, Export All Content. And you can see it's creating an export for us. This may take a few minutes, so it'll actually email you a link, but if you wait around enough on the page, it'll actually give you a link here, so we'll just download that. Now that we have our WordPress.com export, which includes all of the posts, pages, and media, we're actually gonna head over to our self-hosted WordPress.org version of our site. Now, if you don't already have WordPress hosting, you can check out the article in the description below. Uh, we've listed a review of a lot of WordPress hosts out there. A lot of people use Bluehost. Um, I'm not gonna actually show you step-by-step -step how to sign up for a WordPress host, but after you sign up for a WordPress host, they'll give you your username and login to actually log into your WordPress admin. Now we're gonna assume that you've done all that and we're gonna head over to our WordPress.org version of WordPress site. So now you can see we're on a WordPress.org site. Uh, we're already logged in here. If you don't know how to log into your site, we have a video on that, but typically you can just go to slash wp-admin and this will take you to your WordPress admin. So you can see here, we have a fresh WordPress install. Yours is probably gonna look really similar to this. So now that we have our blank site, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is import the content that we exported from our WordPress.com site. And this can be done in the Tools tab and hit Import. And we're gonna use a WordPress importer here. So you have to hit Install Now. And then we're gonna hit Run Importer. So you can see here, the importer wants an XML file. The file from WordPress.com is actually a zip file, so we're just gonna unzip that. And you can see here we have the folder of the zip file. We're gonna go into it, and that, now you can see we have the XML file, so we'll just drag that in to choose file. And now we're gonna click Upload File and Import. Now this file contains all of your posts and references to your media, so you're gonna to wanna to click Download and Import File Attachments because you're gonna be getting rid of your WordPress.com site, so you want all of your content to live on this new install. So from your WordPress.com file, there's actually different authors. So for example, the default user I had was some guy nine. And now I'm gonna to wanna to assign all of my existing posts to my current account here. And we'll do Andy. Now, if you have a blog with multiple authors, you can just go through here and type in everyone's name for the, each one referenced. It'll go through and show you each person that needs to be referenced. Uh, so we have uh, that set. And now we have download and import file attachments checked. And we'll hit submit. Now this may take a few minutes depending on how much content you have. Uh, in the case that we have 30 images here, it takes about a minute, so let's let that run. So what it's actually doing during this import is it's taking all of your content, which is in an XML file, and it's also downloading all of the images. That's what takes most of the time. I should also point out if you have a lot of images and you're familiar with FTP, you can also go here on your WordPress.com site and do export media library and hit download. And it'll actually give you a folder with all of your media, which you can manually move over in FTP in the WP content folder. So now it looks like our export has failed. You can see that the page has failed to load, but don't panic because that might actually happen. We'll head back over to our admin and we'll head over to posts. And now you can see actually everything imported correctly, including the media. So most likely it worked, but the page just timed out, which isn't a big deal because we have all of our content and that's the most important thing we're trying to do here. Now let's head over to our homepage and you can see all of the pages now are listed in the menu bar. So you're gonna to have to restructure a lot of things. So let's fix some of these import issues. For example, let's uh, first dive into the menu bar up here. We're gonna click customize, go to menus. And you can see here we have a menu with all pages. Uh, these are all the menus actually from our WordPress.com site. But the menu we were actually using on the WordPress.com site was primary, but the theme doesn't know to use that. So we'll just go over to the primary menu and set it as our desktop menu. And that's looking more like the production version. 
Now, additionally, let's go back here and let's go to the About page. And you can see the About page here has some really odd formatting. Uh, it kind of looks like what we had on our other site. Let's go back to our other site here. We'll go to Pages and we'll go to About. And you'll notice that this is a columned area and it seems to be a plugin that WordPress defaultly installs called Layout Grid by Jetpack. Uh, your site might not be using this, but I noticed that WordPress by default added this to the site. So let's actually add this to our WordPress.org site. So let's go download that plugin. We'll just type in Layout Grid, which is what uh, the plugin's using here. And you can see the Layout Grid block by Automatic, who makes WordPress.com. So we'll activate that. Now let's go look at our About page. And now you can see it has the correct formatting from our WordPress.com site. Now there's probably gonna be a lot of little things like this, so it's really important to go through all of your pages and figure out what formatting issues are different. Um, and you'll probably have to edit a lot of your pages to actually get it imported. But once you're done, you'll have your own WordPress.org site and you can actually make any customizations you want, add any themes you want, and you don't have to worry about WordPress.com. Now, the one thing I will note is that your WordPress.com site will still be active. And if people are trying to find your site, they'll still be going there. So we're gonna actually have to do a redirect on the WordPress.com site. Unfortunately, WordPress charges for this. It's only $13 a year, but I think it's worth paying for at least one year of it because people are gonna be looking for your site and still finding your old site. So you, we're on our WordPress.com site now, the admin. Let's head over to the Manage tab on the bottom left. And you can see Settings. And you can see Site Address. Uh, and under here, it says, do you wanna buy a custom domain or a redirect? So we'll click Redirect. And you can actually type in your domain that you just purchased and you're using for your WordPress.org site. So you can just buy it here and it's $13 a year. And I think it's well worth it for at least one year. So then your, people are actually finding your site and Google is able to pick up everything. And that's it. We've moved our WordPress.com site to our own self-hosted WordPress.org site. And there are so many things you can do on a self-hosted site. Definitely go check out WordPress plugins and themes and all the customizations you can do. There's so much you can do now that you have your own self-hosted WordPress site. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any issues, let me know in the comments below. I'll definitely be reading them and responding. And remember to like and subscribe. And thanks again for watching. See ya.